we had a lot of discussions about format. So how large can we go and how large can we, do we want to go? Because obviously the larger the format, the more data we create. Dark was the very first Netflix show in Germany. Initial estimates were four terabyte per day. In the end, we ended up with 700 terabyte. The first thing you do is to read the script and make some notes about the things going on in a film or a show. In case of Dark, there were like 500 pages of script. And because of that, I remember that I wrote down many notes. Because we were not only providing camera, but also lighting and grip, we've involved all stuff each day of the shooting. For us, it's uh, very important to have a very good relationship because we're learning from them and they're learning from us. So uh, it's, uh, we're giving and we're taking and uh, we try to um, bring their ideas onto, onto set and, and also the opposite way. and I have a little bit of a history. We met first in film school and worked on a couple of films together. The first time that we, that we actually had a work relationship was when he was um, the first AD on a short film of one of our fellow students and I did the camera. And we realized then that we kind of like, well, are somehow a good match. We have the same taste for certain things and the same understanding for story or for story points. Um, and that leads me to, to shoot his thesis film. And from there on, we did a, a couple of more feature films and one step after the other, it leads to dark at the end. Nick went from our training ship into the HFF Munich and then he met the people for filmmaking and and then suddenly he won a prize almost eight years after he started, which was a great success for him. I saw that movie and I have a, a, still a, a CD or DVD of that. I really appreciate a lot his approach to the image. He's one of the DOPs who is in the first place this modern creative artist and then eventually brings in his excellent technical knowledge. Bo told me very early on, once we've been sitting together talking about the style and the look of the show, that it is called dark and that the show also has to be dark. From a story point, that certainly happens. <laughs> so it was required that I also, you know, contribute in, in the darkness of the whole um, show. Season one, you have very dark, cold and um, rainy weather because it's autumn. And uh, to work that out, you have to play with a lot of rain and creaky wood and wind, for example. It's constantly raining, it's overcast, and also this plays into the interior sets when you just have the soft lights coming in and rain and miserable weather in front of the houses of the majority of the sets. There was also later on the 50s when the weather was a little bit different, but this was also to kind of like separate the different times. Over the course of the, the three seasons of Dark, we, we used quite a bit of LED light. Um, it was less in the beginning and it was significantly more at the, in the third season. We used a lot of light mats, small LED lights that we just bounced around and created um, our, our moody scenes with these kind of lights. And we had sky panels for within the studio, um, just as overhead um, skylight. We just have a certain responsibility towards the environment and this just a significant difference. The amount of power and energy is needed to firing up some Dino lights or just some 
um, warm 2Ks, you know, 5Ks, 10Ks compared to, to an amount, the same amount of light intensity with um, LED lights. I think um, it's not only what we're doing, you know, it's just like that it is a perfect picture. It's also there's just something behind it where we have to be um, aware of, you know. So after I heard about the project, I um, wanted to find out um, about now the camera that I could use. So I um, had the opportunity to test an actually an Alexa 65 versus an Alexa Plus. So I made these tests and got an understanding about the camera, of about the advantage that it has, and about the um, how it renders pictures and and how I could work with it to find the best lenses that I wanted to work with. I I kind of like asked Ari to just like bring everything on more or less. Um, I went also back to the shelves of the lens room and just like took everything that was said, you know, that isn't working <laughs> as well. But it was very interesting to learn about how the camera is actually um, coming up with. And um, I had the opportunity to do it in the test room, you know, with lighting. And also in the back of RA Munich, there is a little bit tiny kind of like bushes and a foresty type. And because a lot of dark would have taken place in a forest, um, there was a good opportunity to, to see how the shallow depths of field or the way, you know, the depths of field um, fades out in the background, the bookie, how it would look on foliage and mm -hmm. branches mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, trunks and all these things with a person in the foreground. On the very first test that I did, I had an intern who was helping me. We went outside, went to this little foresty um, behind Ari. And because it was an overcast and slightly raining day, he had a yellow raincoat, you know, a yellow <laughs> overcoat. <laughs> Later on, when I showed Bo the test, and when he fell in love with the camera as well, he also saw him in this yellow coat. And quite a bit later, he told me that actually then was the decision made that Jonas should have had a yellow raincoat when he's walking into the forest. And this is now a very iconic item, yeah, obviously, yeah, of the yeah. show, um, this yellow Fantastic, raincoat. Yeah. There was a very nice coincidence <laughs> <laughs> that happened. So the altar palms turn out to have a rather large image circle and they also have an area, obviously, they were calculated for a Super 35. <clears throat> no one ever thought they would be used on a, on a larger format. It's not been uh, optically calculated from the um, manufacturer. They have very nice astigmatism and uh, focus roll off towards the edges, um, which made them very attractive for Nick. And my preferred lens of all of them is the 65. I think the 65 and the portrait in a 65 is just gives you this nice really medium format photography feeling when you have a Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter lens and you just take a portrait of the nice fall off, the nice way the, the face is shaped. I just love this lens. So during the post-production of, of Dark, um, the grading parts um, especially, um, there was quite a change over the various seasons from season one to then ultimately season three in terms of the look. So we have all these different characters travel through different or into different time periods. And in season one, I wanted to have one look one show lot that I work on and then everything that I that I want to change from there in terms of look I would do um, through lighting and through the use of color in lighting. Also with discussions with Bo, the director beforehand, was that we very subtle go into the different time periods. So this is how we work through the whole whole season. There's also the 50s, there's the 80s, and then there's some future part. And this is how we started. So I, I um, 
talked very early on to, to Steffen to, to create a show lot that would actually give me the look I had intended um, in all the pre-discussions with Bo beforehand, where we um, pulled a lot of screenshots of other films or looked at um, photography or paintings or just got an idea of how the look um, should be. The beginning of, of the grading for season one, I think we had like um, version three or something of, of, that, of that look uh, uh, that, that we liked, which was, I'd say, something relatively easygoing, no? like um, very elegant, uh, but not too old-fashioned uh, contemporary um, look with um, peachy skin tones and stone blue complementary colors. Uh, not too contrasty and I think we desaturated a little bit um, but um, even though it's uh, like four years old now I think it's still a nice look. We heard and this is something also what you now suddenly have to think about it when you have an international show what we didn't at the time you're now making something for an international audience meaning What's clear for us maybe that the 80s and 2019 are clearly, you know, there's 33 years in between and it's clearly two different um, periods for someone in India or in South America or somewhere in Asia, it's maybe not as clear. So we had to, in order to, to serve the, the audience better, let alone that the story is kind of like complicated and it doesn't really hurt if you have guidelines where you can just like, you know, so like a like a string where you know, okay, so the 80s look like this, the 2019 look like this, uh, 50s like that. When I saw it, it blew me out of the seat. It was unbelievable. I was so proud being involved in this shooting because the new look they created was very impressive. I loved it so much. So for the second season, um, I was trying to get a streak idea to kind of like um, enhance some elements at least of mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. So we were trying all kind of streak filters. Yeah, blue streak filters, several types. Yeah. <clears throat> streak filters. Everything that is that is, is available at mm -hmm. the time, and mm -hmm. um, we also tried a lot of stuff um, mounting behind the lenses. Yeah, we tried um, fishing lines, several fishing types. lines. Yeah, mm -hmm. we sent off people to to actually go to <laughs> to a to a fishing shop um, not too far away from here to come with different sizes <laughs> and different colors of of fishing lines. Well, none of these really worked. You know, they were not thin enough. The, 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 the streak that they created was just not what we um, were after or what I was just like kind of understanding how this should be. Then we created our own custom-made uh, streak filter that hopefully gave you the flair you wanted, I think. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 after all this testing. We created a flare filter, a streak yeah. filter. Yeah. Christoph made many, many filters. It was just painting on a, on a filter. Each brush that he, that he made on it had to be reproduced because we needed it on the A camera, on the B camera. We did it also um, for uh, the second unit camera so that they can individually shoot situations or film situations where is a, a streak filter required. So they, they all look slightly different, but I think at the end we yeah. came up with six nice kind of like matching or um, at the end close enough filters that were producing the flare that I wanted. Not too long to the sides, what is a problem of many streak filters, just some, some streak that ends somewhere and has a certain as a certain strength to it. Sometimes persistency <laughs> is the key. Yeah, sure. I think I'm really happy with what, um, how it is, you know, and how it looks. And season two uh, starts with the hottest summer you can imagine, so you have to build up a huge amount of insects and birds. 
we had all this sun, sun coming into the places. Um, it worked very well on these in the forest. Um, Jonas running through the forest, or in the, in the in the beginning when he when he arrives on these corn fields, you know, with um, two farmers finding him, and you see that the the red is emphasized that is on his on his neck where he was been hanging before, and the skin tone, and also his kind of like grayish pullover who had a little blue in it. How it just like the blue separates, and the nice. And this is one of the the definitely one of the nicest pictures we have with this red and this eyes coming out it's really beautiful it's just such a different to the 2019 the 80s the 50s and the future having this extra in it it's just really makes the whole season very very nice yeah. I mean, being in, in, in the grading room with these guys is like also being uh, preparing almost uh, the next season so they were constantly talking about lenses so um Uh, I came up with something not quite exactly as an anamorphic lens, but uh, something like an anamorphic look involved a little bit of uh, diffusion around the edges, some vignetting, a little bit uh, chromatic aberration that we emphasized in order to, to give uh, the spirit a bit of that the blurry, uh, old-fashioned um, uh, feel. So basically it was The, he took the picture apart and made a very clean picture provided from the um, the Ari Alexa in a very nice way with the nice fall off from the corners and kind of like, you know, made it old fashioned old so it was everything was done in post. For the third season, where the whole story involves even more, and more people are traveling. So again, I went and looked at what is new and available for us in terms of lenses, and again, trying to see if there's anything available um, within the um, anamorphic range of lenses that can be put on this type of sensor. So the, the senior vision lenses gave them optically the the look that he wanted he he wanted to have the the strong anamorphic look with a lot of aberrations in 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 the edges and also in the bouquet um, the problem was the senior vision didn't all cover that format so what we had to do for him we had to extend the the image circle of, on some of the lenses. After you did this, there were also a couple of challenges coming with the thing. Because they are old glass and because there are now or have to cover a larger area that they actually are calculated for, the, the usual top and bottom um, out of focus area that is like eminent on many, very many um, anamorphic lenses, especially the old ones. The newer ones are different calculated, but the older ones always have this kind of like top and bottom um, out of focus areas. Also the edges, you know, there's just like bending edges and things. And on top that the camera assistants, um, um, they really hated these lenses because they couldn't really see on their monitors actually what is in focus and what is not in focus. So they were always kind of like a little bit questioning whether they were they nailed it or they didn't. Fortunately, again, we had like two wonderful colleagues, you know, um, Lars Richter and Von Sokpak. They're, they're just like perfect camera assistants who just like feeling and breathing focus. The third season came out again with the experience and what we learned from from second season um, the story got even more complex you know so instead of having five looks that we used to have in season two we're now facing 10 looks actually for season three <laughs> for example now we're traveling into 1888 there's a uh pictures that I came across uh, on the internet. <laughs> um, I think uh, England in color or something it was called uh, and it's uh, old photography made uh, 
uh, with the help of um, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, uh, color, color process called uh, autochrome. I didn't try to replicate it, but uh, I tried to use it as an inspiration, so uh, that was helpful. I remember that I had this on the first day. We've been in Marta's chamber, let's say, and I remember that everything looks just very perfect, but the skin tones just have been a little bit too red. Not that it looked bad, but it just wasn't looking right. So something was off. So we dialed back on this on this red peak in it. I think there's also the interesting part, um, the look that is that is established at the very end of the show. It's a more colorful look and also contrasty, but certainly more colorful and warmer in a way. If you look at the whole body of dark, you see that it fits totally into it and um, separating, but also coming together and holding it everything together. So that was the great opportunity to do this. You, I don't think that you have it um, on any other project um, this same way, you know, that you can play around so crazily. Yeah, um, after three seasons, uh, uh, depressing and uh, slightly desaturated, it feels really like coming home uh, to uh, introduce a little bit of color and um, to have an ending that is uh, sort of uh, very uh, satisfying uh, in a way. And um, yeah, I like it very much. Es regnet nicht raus. Ist das alles, was du dazu zu sagen hast? I experimented with, uh, again, synthetic winds and drones, for example. But it took me a while to realize that uh, we had to rebuild our symbiosis out of season one and two, but reduce organic elements and build a synthetic opposite of it. Mm -hmm. I also remember that Bo wanted to hear the uh, B-word like in a bubble. One thing with having so many different looks is uh, it is a challenging project. Dark is anyway because of the story, but because of the many, many different periods that you have in, you have to be very prepared to know that now is this time, this is this time, that is this time. But on top of all this, usually each episode takes one day. So we have always morning, we have at one point midday, let's say, and then there's usually it goes into the night. This is, um, as far as I can remember now, is not happening on one, one episode. All the other episodes are working like this. The other thing is you have to be really careful what time of day it is. So you have to kind of like understand so our lights on our lights off um, where is this you know is it is it morning is it evening and and not only you have to be um, uh, aware of this but it's also like the second unit knowing giving them um, the the time of the day so that they know this happened before this happens after stay with your lighting in this it needs to be dawn or whatever so that's also very challenging um, to 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 establish this. Scheiße. Was, was ist in der Höhle? Was ist das? Ach du Scheiße. Was ist hier los? Fuck. Was passiert hier? Los, lauf! Was wird denn laufen? Hier, los! Was wird denn los? Weg hier! Martha! Weg hier! Martha, komm! Weg hier! Komm, Martha! Renn! Renn! My relationship with Nick definitely developed over the years. Based obviously on, on lots of uh, trust and, and knowledge and uh, uh, mutual respect. And uh, this trust I was able to give forward or put forward to the camera department. The whole process was a mutual giving and taking. So it was wonderful for everyone.